Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, in the second week of COP26, thoughts will turn to securing international commitments on moving away from fossil fuel powered cars. It will come as little surprise that the car manufacturers insist they're doing great things. But are they? And are electric cars the silver bullet they're sometimes presented as? In a moment, I'll be joined by Thomas Becker, BMW's Vice President of Sustainability and Mobility Strategy. But first, let's cross to Ben Chu at the Newsnight Wall. Yes, Emma, electric cars are the future of personal transport. That's one of the big messages of COP26. And all the big automotive manufacturers are moving at pace and scale into this area, citing the net zero imperative. Yet can we rely on those manufacturers to deliver on their rhetoric? There is arguably a trust issue here. In July, BMW and VW Group were found guilty and fined 875 million euros by the European Commission for colluding to curb the use of emissions cleaning technology. Technology. And are electric cars all they're sometimes presented as in terms of climate change mitigation? This, from research by the International Council on Clean Transportation, shows the estimated life cycle CO2 emissions per kilometre from an average European petrol or diesel car in 2015. It includes the emissions from the manufacturing process in purple, the fuel production in orange and the fuel use in blue. Now, this chart shows the life cycle emissions from an average European electric car, including from manufacturing, the battery in green, building the car itself in purple, and in producing the electricity that runs it in orange. Now, as you can see, the life cycle emissions of an electric car are lower than of a conventional car, but they are not zero. You need not only one mineral to make an electric car battery, but uh, multiples. So all of those minerals might be from different areas. You might have lithium from Argentina. You might have nickel from Indonesia. You might have synthetic graphite from China. So all of those minerals need to come together where they're going to be made into a by, in a factory, say in Germany. Um, so that transport will have carbon um, and greenhouse gas emissions attached to, to it as well. At the moment, there are all these different parts of the process, parts of the supply chain that do have emissions attached to them. And even when you're in the factory, you're going to have um, me uh, mechanics going on that use um, electricity from the grid, which isn't 100% um, renewable energy at the moment. You see a similar story with battery manufacturing emissions. Most lithium ion batteries in the EU in 2016 were produced in Japan and South Korea, where around a third of the domestic electricity is generated from coal. And in countries where electricity is still generated by fossil fuels, the emissions of the electric car will be much higher. What all this emphasises is that to get to net zero on transport, we can't just rely on swapping petrol cars for electric ones. We need the total decarbonisation of energy grids and a battery manufacturing process that is much less carbon emitting than it is at present. Some see another pitfall with the electric car revolution. In order to get to net zero, rather than just incentivising people to switch to electric vehicles, should the government not also be encouraging people, where possible, to drive less? That would involve better city design with more pedestrianisation and cycle options, as well as much improved public transportation. Many analysts felt encouragement for personal behaviour change on transport was underplayed in the UK government's recent transport decarbonisation plan. They also say this area looks underfunded, with £5 billion promised for cycling and buses versus £27 billion for the government's road building programme. Now, no one serious on net zero doubts a mass global rollout of electric vehicles is necessary. But decarbonising personal transport requires much more than simply switching the vehicle we drive. Emma. Thanks, Ben. Well, let's speak now to uh, Dr. Th Thomas Becker, Vice President for Sustainability and Mobility Strategy at the BMW Group of Car Manufacturers. Good evening. Um, Thank you for being here. We just heard there about events in July. BMW was fined with VW uh, for colluding uh, to prevent clean emissions technology, a large amount. Uh, how should we or how can we trust what you have to say about this issue? Well, to be very clear, the findings of the European Commission did explicitly say that there was no allegation of, MP of breaking environmental law in the case of BMW. It was about talking to one another in the way one sh shouldn't have done that. So there was no harm done, neither to the consumers to, nor to the environment. But very clearly, trust is one of the scarcest resources we have here. And very clearly also, if we talk about being compliant with Paris, 
it's not about claiming, it's not about just saying you do so, it's about being able to provide evidence, it's about being accountable and it's about being able to demonstrate for every year how much have you been improving compared to the year before. And this is the job that is ahead of us. And I must say, what just has been said is right. The job is not done by just switching the drivetrain. It's a far more complex, comprehensive job of decarbonizing the entire system of which we are a central part, but where we need to collaborate with many others to really bring down the CO2 footprint of the kilometer our customers uh, drive have, at the you end. You have to let us know what you're not saying in public and what you're saying, I suppose, to other companies. You, you're obviously accepting there, you know firsthand that the creation of electric cars is, is intensive, the battery sourcing Absolutely. of them, all of that yes. is not where it should be, hence why there are these questions even about electric cars. Indeed. So if you would do just nothing and accept, for example, uh, grey energy in the production of uh, electric batteries, the footprint of an electric vehicle before we even put it together ourselves, just talking about the parts, would be twice as high as an internal combustion engine. But the story doesn't end there. Our job is to bring it down and bring it down below the level of today's ICE cars. Meaning Your other cars. job is to sell loads of cars, Absolutely. which I just want to get into really because you're a sustainability yeah. champion, I suppose, with the BMW Group, or that's your job. Your entire model is predicated on getting people to buy another model. Yeah. Well, how is that sustainable? Surely you actually need to be saying to people, keep your cars for a lot longer. So how long do you think people should be keeping their cars? Well, if you look at today's market, the average privately owned European car, and I'm not talking about corporate cars who are much newer, it was built 11 years ago. They have the emissions of harmful substances and CO2 that were state of the art in 2010. Okay, so, so once you buy your new car that is wonderfully yeah. made, better for the environment, how long should you keep it? You should keep it as long as you wish. I mean, you this bring is, out the next model. We bring out the next model. This is precisely our job. And this will have to be much better than the one but before. But you need to make fewer cars as well as to hit these targets, don't you? As well as changing that appetite we have as consumers to keep buying. Our, That's not good for your business. Our role is to make every car that we sell better than the one before. And to, to entice engage people to buy more cars. In order to enable people to make a choice for a product where they know that it has the smallest possible footprint. And this is our responsibility here. Should people drive less? For us, it is not about having everybody go into the historic city centers of European cities by car. And we made this very clear already two years ago. We are a strong supporter of a better collaboration between transport modes. But the reality of BMW as a brand is that we are a brand of commuters. So it's about traveling from the countryside, from suburbia, into the city. This does not mean to travel the last 500, uh, 500 meters. But everything that would help, and we have all those digital means out there who can support that, to find a parking lot right away will reduce congestion by avoiding unnecessary traffic, for example. You brought up those older cars with diesel and petrol engines. When are you going to stop producing them completely? We have a clear commitment for our two British brands to discontinue uh, combustion engines by 2030. No, overall. For BMW it's a different story and we didn't make such a decision at this point in time because the uncertainty of the framework conditions is so huge that we don't feel that there is a sound basis for making such a decision for BMW. I'm not talking about Mini and Rolls Royce, which are short-range brands. Thank which you very much. I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you.